Hmm, these guys seem a bit antsy. Yeah, seems legit. What's up guys, Rogue9 here and I'm back once again to take a closer look at one of the levels of Rainbow Six Siege. Up today, the Presidential Plane. As always, we'll first take a look at the overview from the outside. The Presidential Plane map is very compact and all three spawning points are actually very close to the plane itself. We have two spawn points on the left hand side of the plane, the main entrance at the front and the reporter entrance at the back. And on the right hand side we have the front service entrance. The plane itself has three different floors and we'll be working our way down from the top. To enter the third floor from the outside you are limited to only two options, both of them coming from the south. Heading up the eastern caterer will take you straight into the radio room, while when you climb up the western caterer you have the option of going up an additional ladder which will take you to the roof of the plane from where you'll be able to drop down right at the back into server room B. The only other way of getting into the third floor is coming up from the second. For this you'll have the option of two ladders in the back and stairs in the front. And even though getting into the third floor is difficult, it can be a great way to storm the plane since not only do you have the two ladders and the stairs heading down, you also have four different floor breach points. The only other thing to be aware of is the camera in the cabin staff section at the front. And with the overview complete, it's now time to dive in and take a closer look. So this is the external approach from the front service entrance area which is in the southeast of the map. Since we're getting up to the third floor straight away it's quite a long climb which will take you into this caterer and here you have a small solid wall for cover before you approach the door heading on into the radio room. If you do run into any opposition here just duck back behind this wall and you should be fairly safe unless they have explosives and throw them at you. Now heading into the radio room you can face two directions to the left leading to the cabin staff section and to the right is the cockpit. And here we have our first floor breach, this one will lead down to the front hall. Fighting your way into the cockpit can be a bit challenging especially if the enemy puts up a shield which will give them cover while you can only attack from one side. On the other hand it is a dead end which means you'll be trapped if you choose to defend from here. Now through the doorway ahead you can already see the cabin staff section which basically has two ways down. The cockpit stairs on the right will lead you down to the second floor while the maintenance tunnel on the left will allow you to get into the server section. And this of course is still on the third floor. Oh uh oh, I don't like that sound. As you can see the wall to server room A beyond the stairs can be fully breached which makes it a great place for a murder hole if you're a defender. Anyone coming up the stairs is most likely to be looking forward and you can just blast them from behind. Now before we move on from here let's take a quick look at the camera in this room. As you can see it's in the northeastern corner of the room and predominantly faces down the stairs. You cannot see into the cockpit and you have a very limited view down the maintenance hallway. And speaking of maintenance hallway, this is actually part of server room A, which is a large section in the center of the aircraft with semi-breachable floors and three separate floor breach points. The first one of which, to my left here, will actually bring you down into the kitchen. Not today, sunshine. As you can see, one of the features of the server room area is that the walls provide solid cover. And here we already have the second floor breach which leads down to the executive hallway. And the third floor breach point right here will take you down into the staff section. Wow, flashbangs and machine gun fire in a confined metal tube. I hope Fuse is wearing hearing protection. And as you will have noticed from the minimap, we are by now in server section B, which is the final room on the third floor of the plane. 
On our right, you will see a ladder leading down to the aptly named Ladder Room. And that's actually a good way to get down to the second floor since the Ladder Room is quite small and offers a lot of sight protection. This ladder here leads you down to press section B and is far more open and makes you far more vulnerable if you're going down. This final section here is the glow stick room, a quite a defensible room since it has solid walls and the floor is not breachable. The only thing you have to think about is the skylight in the ceiling leading to the outside. To reach this you need to make your way up to the southwestern caterer and there you'll find a ladder which will lead you to the roof. Well, I say it leads you to the roof, it leads you to the roof of the caterer, you can't actually walk along the plane, you're confined to this small area from where you can jump down into server room B. And with that we've explored the third floor, time to get stuck into the second. Defending the second floor can be very challenging since there are many ways to breach it. There are four ways to get in from the outside. Two caterers at the back, both on the left and right hand side of the plane. You can make your way onto the left wing and then in through the emergency exit. And there is also a caterer at the front left side of the plane. Coming down from the third floor you have a total of seven choices. There are the cockpit stairs, the four floor breach points we mentioned earlier and the two ladders in the back. Coming up from below you have two flights of stairs, one in the front and one in the back. That gives you a whopping 13 paths to enter this floor. And really the second floor is where the party is at in this level. This is where you'll also find two separate cameras, one in the front hallway and one in press section A. And you also have a total of three ammo cases, depending on the type of mission you're playing of course. These are situated in the meeting room, the executive bedroom and press section A. Last but not least there are of course also three floor breach points. These are in the changing room, the staff section and the security room. And now that we have a good overview of this floor, it's time to take a walk. We're now back towards the front of the plane coming down the cockpit stairs from the third floor. This can be quite a risky way down since you're open to attacks from both sides, from the kitchen and the hallway. If you want to come down into this area, it might well be worth coming down through the ceiling hatch in the kitchen instead. As you can see the kitchen offers not only line of sight protection but also has solid walls. Just be wary of this open doorway to the pantry. Similarly the pantry is also quite safe with the exception of the eastern wall here that goes through to the meeting room. Now heading past the front stairs into the front hallway and here once again we have one of the CCTV locations. This camera allows defenders a view down the corridor and over towards the pantry and the front staircase. Along the right side of the hallway here, you can tell by the wood panelling that this wall is semi-breachable up until you reach this doorway where it becomes fully breachable. To our right now we have the meeting room. The table in the middle is quite solid and offers protection against bullets while the chairs only offer sight protection. The walls on both the eastern and western side are mostly fully breachable apart from that section behind the couch here which is semi-breachable. Once again in the northwestern part of this room in the corner there is an opportunity to create a murder hall overlooking the front staircase. Now since I'm playing bomb disposal mode there aren't actually any ammo crates on the map. But in other game modes the meeting room we just left does contain an ammo crate in the southwestern corner. Just above us and to our right here is a ceiling breach point that leads down from the cockpit area. As you can tell, a large section of the wall leading into the executive office is breachable. Similar to the cockpit above us, this room can only be entered from one direction, but at the same time, if you're holed up in here, you are trapped. It is a dead end. The desk here does provide some tempting cover, so you'll frequently find defenders holed up behind there, if they're in this room. And it is worth taking full advantage of the breachable wall, at least to shoot through to put your enemies under pressure. The same goes for the meeting room of course. Now of course we've just been in the meeting room so we know it's clear but blowing up things is fun. So why not have a go at it sometimes. Anyway before we head back to the rear end of the plane let's just take a quick look at this entrance area here. This area is the main entrance and can be accessed via stairs from below. Quicker and more convenient than the ladders in other parts of the plane, you can also use your weapons while walking up these stairs, while ladders can leave you temporarily defenseless. 
And now there is one last thing I wanted to show you. And as we pass through here, it's actually important to note that the corridor is blocked off and there's no way through. You have to come through the kitchen if you want to get to the rear part of the aircraft. And since the corridor is blocked up at this section, it even has a different name. It's called Executive Hallway. And the thing I wanted to show you is that the Executive Hallway can be breached via the emergency exit from the wing. To get up here, use the caterer and the ladder at the rear end of the wing and then walk along it to reach the emergency exit. Be aware though that any enemies on the second floor will be able to spot you through the open windows. Now in my experience the windows are in fact bulletproof so you are safe out here but if you are spotted it can make fighting your way in through the doorway very difficult if not impossible. Righto then, time to head back in. Coming back into the executive hallway here, you'll find an interesting little room. Uh, this is the laundry room and it is literally a one square meter room with breachable walls in the west and south. The wooden floor in this room is semi-breachable. I've found blowing through this wall here of limited value really since anyone down the hallway can just open straight up on you with a straight line of fire. In the changing room now we have the first floor panel on the second floor leading down to the first. Dropping down here will bring you into the luggage hold. Of course in order to do that you will need either a breaching charge, the breaching grenade launcher or the sledgehammer. Haha, <laughs> and I actually got one! Yeah, it doesn't uh, stop you from shooting through though, does it? Moving on, we now enter the executive bedroom. The upturned bed in the centre of the room can provide significant cover, but you will have to be wary of enemies blowing their way in through the western wall. In most game modes, the executive bedroom will also contain an ammo crate. This can be found just about straight ahead of me against the southern wall there. Well, that mattress has seen better days. But I think it's time to head on. Back in the executive hallway here, be aware of the ceiling breach that comes down right in front of the executive bedroom. I don't actually like using this since you can be fired upon from both ends of the corridor as well as the bedroom. The staff section here is relatively open and it has a breachable panel both in the ceiling and in the floor. If you ever need to get from the third floor quickly down into the first floor, this might be a good choice. If you do go through the floor panel, you'll end up in storage. To head further towards the rear of the plane, you have several options here. You can go through the security room like I'm doing now, or to my left is actually a breachable wall. Once inside the security room, you again have a breachable wall to the left, or you can head through the wall that you can see just on the right of the screen there, which will lead you to the ladder room. If you're expecting enemies in the press section, this might actually be the better option, since the ladder room will provide you with solid cover and a doorway to shoot through. As you will have noticed by now, the security room also contains a floor panel that will take you through into the cargo hold. Now, straight ahead of me here in press section A, we finally have an ammo box. Now, this is a regular ammo box that will also be there in other game modes. I find that both press section A and press section B can be quite challenging to fight through. The passenger seats, even though they don't provide solid cover, provide a lot of sight cover and it really makes this this area dangerous since enemies can literally be anywhere. If someone is set up in ambush here behind one of the seats, you will probably not see them until they start shooting at you. And now that I'm in the security room here, you can really see the benefit that I would have in the ladder room. Since the wall through to the west is fully breachable and there is no cover at all in the security room, staying here can be very dangerous. Just out here in press section A is the second camera on this floor. As you can see, this camera looks mainly along press section A, partially into press section B, and it can also see the doorway of the security room. Now in the ladder room you can see it's quite small and quite secure with the only weaknesses being the breachable wall into the security room and the fact that someone can come down from above. And this is what the top of the ladder looks like. We're back in server room B, just for a quick peek. 
Let's see now if we can finally make it through this room and reach press section B. Since we are running somewhat low on ammo, I might as well restock. And on we go. And here you can really see what I mean with the sight problems in this room. Of course, when you're facing human enemies, it might be similarly difficult for them to spot you, but the AI seem to have a, a weird ability to a be able to see located. through these chairs. Nevertheless, we've made it past and we are finally in press section B. This tiny room here with breachable walls both east and west is actually the press bathroom. Whoever designed this plane doesn't seem to have very much respect for members of the press since there are no fixtures in this room at all. But while I'm getting distracted by images of reporters crapping on the floor, a sneaky enemy behind the seats has actually managed to push me into a retreat. So this time I've chosen to go in through the parallel corridor, hopefully unopposed. Yep, so much for that. I'm under fire from two directions I need to go. As you can see, press section B is bifurcated by the stairs leading downwards, and these feature fully breachable walls both north and south. The wall at the back, the one here with the ladder, is also semi-breachable, again allowing defenders to put up a defensive murder hole covering the stairs. And that's it, back to the map. And here it is, the map to the first floor. This time we have three possible entrances from the outside, two at the front and one at the rear. To come down from the second floor, you have the option of using the three floor breach points we saw earlier, or either of the two staircases. Once you're on the first floor, you'll need to look out for the two cameras, one in the cargo hold and one in the luggage hold, and if you're running low on ammo, you can refill in the luggage hold. And that's it, short, sweet and simple. Let's check it out. We're now heading down the back stairs towards the cargo hold on the first floor. The first floor is a bit similar to the third floor in that the rooms are much larger compared to the second. Once inside the cargo hold, we encounter the first camera, which overlooks pretty much the cargo hold and nothing much else. In the center of the cargo hold, you can see the ceiling breach point, which comes down from the security room. I quite like this breach point since you come down in between the cargo containers, which will offer you at least some cover. Here we'll take a quick look at the northwestern entrance. And it's called the reporter entrance. So first they have to come in through the cargo hold, and then once in flight they have to poo on the floor. <laughs> if you're a reporter, don't travel on this plane. It's just not worth it. Back to more serious business, uh, heading towards the east, which is the front of the plane, we now reach an entrance to a corridor with a breachable wall to the right of it. This long corridor can quite easily be covered from the other end. If they, the doors haven't been boarded up, defenders can set themselves up in a covered position and really make it difficult for you to get through. And that's why we'll be going through the wall here. You can see that the enemies have tried to defend this place by putting up two reinforcement barricades. And I'm not actually sure if that small section of wall to the outer side of the aircraft can actually be barricaded. I've never seen it done. My guess is that the curve of the outer shell of the aircraft there is getting in the way. But enough of cowering around, it's time to move forward. Haha, -ha, they heard me coming and ran away. Wow, and my random fire through the wall actually killed three enemies. And here we are in the storage room. We've already seen that the wall to the west is fully breachable, but so is the wall to the east. Furthermore, note the ceiling panel coming down from the staff section above. And the biggest, creepiest and most fake looking deer head ever. It seems that whatever dignitary uses this plane also seems to take their random collection of antiques with them. Now it's time to move on and once again I'm opting to go through the wall rather than through the corridor. Let me make sure I get into some cover first though, because usually uh, breaching through a wall makes you an easy target. Every gun in the room will turn towards you. Not that guy though. Moving swiftly on, I will now get to show you the luggage hold. Well, swiftly but cautiously. And while I'm at it, why don't I show you the angle of the camera which is right above me? The luggage stacked up in the hold does kind of limit your view, but you can see through to the first aid station and you can see anyone coming out from the service corridor to your left. 
just across the waste height cargo to my right here now has been located. Move to its location and plant a diffuser. is the breach point in the ceiling that leads down from the executive changing room. And as I'm sure you've noticed by now, this room also contains an ammo crate. Heading further east towards the front of the plane, you have two options. You can either go through this doorway, or if the walls haven't been fortified, you can head through here. This will lead you either into the first aid station, or if you go right through the northern part of the wall on the left-hand side, you'll end up in a secret corridor that has no doors or windows, and the only way to get in is breaching through the wall. The first aid station is more or less a corridor, but the entire northern wall can be breached. The room does not have a lot of cover, which can make it difficult to get through, but at the same time, it's also very difficult to defend, so you're not likely to actually encounter anyone in here. This section of the wall leads to underneath the stairs and cannot be breached at all. And I can hear a bomber stomping towards me. Time to do some ambushing of my own. <laughs> and one for good measure. And last but not least, we'll now go to explore the cargo front entrance. This area is quite simple. You have the two entrances to the north and south, this one here being the southern one, and up there is the way into the radio room. And of course, from here, you also have the stairs leading up to the second floor. But what about that secret corridor you mentioned, I imagine you saying? Well, let's take a look. We're back in the luggage hold and just north of the first aid station. You recognize where we are. Now, so far we've established that members of the press don't really get the best treatment on this plane. Now, this closed off corridor in the plane that has no doors or windows is called technical seating. And unless it has some kind of meaning that I'm not aware of, I can only imagine that this is where the technical staff get to sit, walled in in complete darkness. But trying to explain this corridor aside, it's just, it's just a corridor breachable from the east and the west. And that concludes our tour of this map. I hope you found it somewhat informative and maybe even entertaining. Special thanks go to Pogo91 for capturing the footage. If you want to see more of these videos, leave a like, maybe even a comment. And apart from that, the only thing that remains for me to say is I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.